Hello, today we're having a look at the Booker Youngman in Microsoft Flight Simulator. So this was a an aircraft that was built following the First World War. It's got quite an interesting history, I've been reading about it on the internet. So there was a pilot in the German Air Force called Karl Booker, who uh, at the end of the First World War moved to Sweden and formed the company Svenska Aero AB. So SAAB might sound familiar, but it's not the Saab we know. That was Svenska Aeroplan AB. Anyway, um, Karl Booker, this was the first aircraft that his new company made, and it was called, obviously, the, the Booker Youngman, or the pronunciation, or sorry, the translation of that is Young Man. Um, it was sold all over the world in huge numbers. Throughout Germany, a lot of Eastern European countries like Bulgaria, and Poland bought them, um, Spain bought them. Spain, I believe, operated them into the mid-1960s. So that's how successful it was. They had hundreds of them. So if we go and have a quick look at it in the simulator, it's very, very good. The material modelling on it is as good as any I've seen. So as we work our way around it, it's really, really nice. And the animations are really good as well. So if you watch very carefully on the ailerons here, if I move the ailerons, you'll see the rods and the pivots and things all working nicely. And that's true all the way around the aircraft. So if we come around to the tail and you watch the rudder there, with all of the assemblies move as you'd expect them to, it's really nice. OK, so if we go and jump inside... It is not a study level plane by any means. It's not It's not up there with Ant's aeroplanes, um, Tiger Moth, for example. But it is great fun. So if we press F, you will notice there's a bit of a fisheye lens on the internal view. So if you just roll the mouse wheel forwards a couple of clicks, that will correct that back to a normal kind of looking um, camera aperture. OK, so let's have a look around the cockpit. Any sort of a modern pilot wouldn't be very familiar with a lot of these instruments because they are, you know, from the 1920s, basically. So let's have a quick look around. We've got pito heat over here. We've got a clock, a starter button, we've got a battery switch, magnetos, we've got some breakers, and we'll come back to these. They're not what they appear to be. We've got indicated airspeed. We've got an alt altimeter, but a very strange one compared to what we know today. Um, binnacle compass, turn coordinator, um, vertical speed, RPM, cylinder head temperature, and I can't remember what this dial is, but we'll we'll have a look at it while we're flying around, and hopefully it'll make some sense. We've got the um, nav lights over here on the right hand side, and we've got a comm radio and a transponder outside the cockpit, so you can obviously they've been retrofitted in, so you can fly it in the modern world. Okay, so in terms of um, functional controls, you've got obviously mixture and throttle. We've got a fuel shutoff valve, so to open the fuel valve, you pull it towards you. So then we could go and turn on the magnetos, and we could turn the battery on, and we could hopefully start the engine. So if I just scoot across and we hold the button in, And we've got to start it. Okay, so there's a, there's also a primer down here. I forgot to mention. So if you if it won't start, you can always prime it. Uh, we'll go and turn the nav lights on then. And if we go and have a look outside to make sure they have actually come on. Yes, they have. Should have a. Have we got a light on the tail? Yes, we have. Okay. So then we probably don't need the pito heat because it's a lovely warm day, but. Uh, what else can we have a look at? We can turn on some of these instruments. So there's the comm radios. And then we're going to get a little transponder down here. Um, OK. Let's take it for a fly, shall we? So if I press F... We're at Boonville in the US, by the way. So we'll see the valley in a moment. So we're just going to come off the parking brake. There are no flaps in this aircraft. In common with biplanes of the era, none of them had flaps. So we're just going to roll out onto the runway. Move my microphone slightly so it's not in my own way. So if I press space, 
I can see almost over the nose, but in common with lots of these planes in the real thing, they would have just craned out over the side of the cockpit to see where they were going. So I said it wasn't very steady level. It doesn't lurch around too much. You still have to be on top of it for your takeoff roll. So it's fairly straightforward to fly. So if we have a look at this from outside as we're flying it, it sounds really nice. And it looks really nice. You can see it's extremely stable. So it's, it's no wonder, if this is accurate, it's no wonder it was used as a trainer. It's very, very, very straightforward to fly. Obviously, being an open cockpit, you could get unrivaled visibility. So, so we'll take it up to a little bit of altitude. It can climb very well. We can actually push it to full throttle and it won't damage the engine. Like I said, it's not really study level, but it's great fun to fly around. So, I mentioned we were going to talk about some other switches within the cockpit. These breakers are actually a hidden autopilot system. So the, the top button, if we switch it on, will level, the, or I think it will hold pitch and roll. Yes, it is. It's holding pitch and roll when you switch it on. And this light comes on, LED comes on to tell you it's active. So that's an autopilot. The buttons underneath are altitude hold, level mode, heading select, and then an actual rollable switch, which lets you choose the direction. So unfortunately there's no marker, so you have to kind of do it by eye. But I think it's really nice. Okay, so we're turning back round towards Boonville. So if you wanted to use this to do some long trips, you could because it has a, you know, a nice autopilot. So sometimes it does pay off to not be quite so realistic, doesn't it? So you can see the material modelling with the scratches and dirty marks on the glass is really nicely done. I'm super impressed with this. Okay, so if we pull the throttle back, to idle, and feeding in back stick more and more and more. It falls in a straight line. Okay. So okay, let's get some airspeed back. So you can see kilometers an hour down here. Okay, let's try a turning stall to see if it tips in, and yes, it will just tuck under. And if you continue holding, it will continue rolling. If you let go, it will stop. And then you can just pull out of the manoeuvre. So it's incredibly forgiving. So all you have to do to get out of any kind of spin situation is just let go. Obviously, if you have the altitude. You can force it out of spins using the rudder as well. So it's very, very responsive. Okay. Let's try a touch and go and see how we get on with a nice approach to the airfield. So we'll fly over, round past the lake and come in. Well, it's not really a lake, is it? More of a puddle, but we'll see how we get on. So we're just descending on idle. So 
much of the flying of this era of aeroplanes is about stick, rudder and feel and judgement. It's not, a, not so much about reading the instruments because you can't really get into too much trouble with this amount of drag and power. You know, even if you drop towards the floor, you're going to have a job to overspeed it. It might creak a bit and complain. Okay, just keep an eye on the runway. It's a lovely still day. Or, I sorry, I have set the weather to be a lovely still day. Um, the actual weather in Boonville this morning was atrocious. You couldn't see across the car park. It was ridiculous. It was absolute stair rods of rain falling. Okay, so we see we can see we're quite happily coming in. So we can do the usual trick of using the cursor keys to slide across the cockpit to simulate leaning out the side of the aeroplane. Just roll in gently and do a touch and go. Going a bit fast, but seeing as we're not stopping, we're not worried. Just going to feed in more and more back stick to see how it falls onto the runway. There it goes, it suddenly sank. Full throttle. Back in the air again. Back into the middle. And we'll go and circle back round and do a proper approach to land. So that's actually the first approach I've done in the aircraft, so I'm quite impressed with um, just how docile it is, or docile I guess if you are US, or American I should say. Okay, so yeah, the, I am really impressed with this, it's only uh, £20, something like that, in the, the marketplace for Flight Simulator. It looks gorgeous. It really does. And the, like, as I said, the material modelling is fantastic on it. And having that hidden autopilot is really the icing on the cake if you just want something to go for a fly. OK, let's go and get this approach sorted out, shall we? I'm trying to sort out a camera angle that gives me the indicated airspeed and a view of the runway. Yeah, we're going to be too fast again. We can side slip it. You can lose speed through side slipping, which is quite neat. I know some people will tell me off for side slipping on final approach, but I'm not going to worry too much. Got a nice long runway here at Boonville anyway, so it's not really such a concern. 
And a bit of a bounce this time. Not too bad, though. Okay. So let's taxi in. Let's have a look at it as we taxi in. It's a lovely looking aeroplane, isn't it? It does tend to wander when it's on the ground. You can see that happening. It's a lot easier to fly it from inside, to be honest. I'm terrible at controlling aircraft from the outside. I find it an awful lot easier to do things from the inside. Especially when they wander around. Oh, maybe we won't go into the car park at the end because there's a, an AI plane that's had a bit of a nightmare and is spinning on its axis. So maybe we'll ignore that. Maybe we'll point the camera this direction. <laughs> There you go, the Booker Youngman in Microsoft Flight Simulator. What a lovely aeroplane. Okay, obviously to power it down, all we need to do is pull the mixture basically, and then turn the magnetos off, turn the lights off. Obviously we can optionally go and turn the various instruments off that we had on, whoops, that we had on in the cockpit, and then turn the battery off. So there we go, the Booker Youngman in Microsoft Flight Simulator. It's a lovely, lovely aeroplane. So I can't recommend it enough, really, if you like this sort of plane. Anyway, I'm going to leave it there, and I'll see you again soon.